Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Practical Parallelism in C++. My name's Nick. So we're going to continue on with looking at uh, parallel, Gaussian uh, parallel Gaussian elimination and what's an optimization that we can do to our naive case where we did this kind of um, this block based mapping that we kind of hinted at that there was some load imbalance. So let's kind of expand on that for a second. So here again we're looking at a simple 8 by 8 matrix and we're looking at you know how does how is the load distributed so we're concerned with how much work is each thread uh, being given and is that balanced so is every thread doing um, you know an equal amount of work or all the threads you know maybe one thread is really really busy and another thread finishes super early and it's just kind of idle so let's see how that breaks down so let's just take the simple example of two threads and let's go back to that block uh, mapping right so uh, we'll split this matrix in half, so half the th uh, rows will go to one thread, um, so the top uh, rows will go to thread zero, and then the bottom rows will go to thread one. And then look, let's look down here to kind of motivate why we want to do kind of a more intelligent mapping. All right, so uh, the number of eliminations that this first row does is zero. All it does is has to do this normalize function across its elements. All right. And then row one has to do uh, one elimination. Row two has to do two eliminations. Row three has to do one, two, three eliminations. And what this turns out to is whatever the row number is. So for rows zero through seven, row seven has to do seven eliminations. Row six has to do six eliminations. Row zero does zero eliminations. So, you know, right off the bat, we can kind of notice all of these lower index rows do uh, strictly less work uh, as far as the number of el eliminations than all of these bottom ones. And we can actually count that up by just the number of zeros that's a difference. So uh, this will be 1 plus 2 plus 3. So that's a total of 6 uh, eliminations that uh, these guys have to do versus um, the, one, the lower ones. Uh, so this is 1, 2, 3. And then versus 4, 5, 6, and 7. Right, so 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 6 is 15, plus 7 is 22. So while the first four, row, first four rows do 6 total eliminations, uh, the bottom four rows do a total of 22 eliminations. So, you know, yikes, that's not very uh, balanced. But it turns out fixing this, or at least doing this a little more intelligently, isn't that hard. And so we'll do something called uh, cyclic striped mapping. Now, we're not guaranteed that every single row will do the exact same amount of work, but it gets us a lot closer to that, um, that limit. So what we'll do, we'll take the very simple case of two threads, and what we'll do, instead of doing this big block of continuous rows, we'll just alternate. So we'll say that uh, this row will go to thread 0, this row will go to thread 1, this row will go again to thread 0, and this one to thread 1. And what happens is, um, there's only one element of difference or one elim uh, numbers of elimination between each mapping. So instead of, you know, you know this guy doing seven less eliminations than this guy down here, um, over here, it's just, you know, w one difference, right? So thread zero here will do, uh, you know, six eliminations for this row, and then Thread one will do seven elimination eliminations for this row. So it's a lot more balanced, right? So we're basically splitting the work up more intelligently. And we'll see how we do that uh, in our code. It's going to be very similar to what we've already looked at. So again, a refresher on our serial algorithm. We iterate over all of the rows. Uh, for each row, uh, on the diagonal, the diagonal uh, where the row is equal to the column, it's called a pivot point. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, those are all pivot points. And what we'll do is we'll normalize the row to that pivot point, which means that we'll make the pivot point equal to zero, uh, equal to 1 rather, by dividing it by itself. And then we'll divide all the other elements in that row by that value. All right, so this is for solving systems of linear equations. So we can divide by a scalar value or uh, some constant value if we want to. And then, so... Like I said, here we select a pivot, uh, which is a diagonal. Then we uh, go ahead and divide everything in the row by the pivot. And we set whatever uh, 
whatever the pivot is equal to one. Then down here, we do the elimination. So this is the part that we're going to, uh, that we already showed that we can parallelize naively. And so we'll do this a little more intelligently uh, when we look at that code. And so again, all we do is we go through the rest of the rows and then we uh, we pick a scale that we want to, you know, in order to do this actual elimination right here. So how many times do we have to subtract row one from row two in order to get a zero in the spot? That's what the scale is. And then we go ahead and do that subtraction right here. And then we just set that spot equal to zero because we know we're going to get rid of it. So uh, just avoid the multiplication and subtraction. And then of course at the very end, the very last pivot point down here will trivially be one because uh, uh, you know, that's, that's the only thing left there. There's no more eliminations to follow. So we're just going to divide it by itself. So we know that answer of anything divided by itself is going to be one. Okay, so that's our serial code. Now let's go to the more interesting, how do we do this cyclic mapping in our actual code? So let's go to utils.h. And so here we have um, our GE parallel function, which is our parallel Gaussian elimination. So again, it's a p-thread function. So it's going to take uh, a void pointer uh, to a struct of args, and then a, it will return a void pointer, uh, which the return doesn't really matter. We're not returning anything. So uh, over here, we'll unpack. And then well, what do we unpack? So we need to pass something different this time. So here's we have a struct up here of things that will pack that changes slightly between these different uh, iterations of, of the uh, of the algorithm and so all we really need is the thread ID so which thread am I we need the total number of threads that we've launched and then of course we need a pointer to the matrix we need uh, we need the dimensions of the matrix and then of course we need a pointer to the barrier right so we're still doing this this uh, kind of broadcast parallel version of pthreads where basically one row does the normalization and then it broadcasts that result to the rest of the rows to do the elimination. So we'll use a barrier in this case. And we don't need to really worry about these. These are just for performance monitoring. And then that's what this perf cycle is. This perf cycle just starts our performance counters. Okay, so here's, here's the, the meat and potatoes of uh, our improved algorithm. So what do we do here? So again, we're going to iterate over all rows, so this is still the same. Now the only thing that's going to differ is this check to see if the row belongs to us. So instead of doing this, you know, greater than the uh, our start row and less than our end row, we're just going to do uh, the mod of the number of threads, right? Because the modulo operator just gives us a remainder. So if we look back here, um, let's just run it again. If we look back here, so this is row uh, zero, row one, row two, row three. So if we have two threads, this would be mod two. So zero mod two is zero. One mod two is one. Two mod two is zero. Three mod two is one. So basically we get this pattern of zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So that's exactly what we want. And if we had more threads, say four threads, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So it works for all of these pairs of threads uh, that we can add on. So all we need to do is the mod operator and check to see if it's, if it's the TID that belongs to this thread. So that's how we do this uh, normalization calculation. And then again, down here, uh, it's the exact same. So just like we had to decide, you know, am I responsible for the elimination for this row? we have to do that same check to see if uh, any of the rows after the pivot row, if that row belongs to this thread. So if uh, J, that row, mod the number of threads is equal to the thread ID, that's when we do, you know, we find the scale value and then we actually do the elimination here. And then we do the trivial assignment for the element we're deleting, which we know will be zero. And then of course, the pivot element for the very last row is going to be uh, uh, one because you know it's the only thing left. So we're just going to divide the pivot by itself. So we can do this trivial assignment here, skip the last iteration of that outer loop. Okay, and then of course we'll stop all our performance counters. So that's going to do it. Um, as far as all the changes that we've made, it's really just these bounds checks, or it's really just you know these mapping checks to see which threads are mapped. Um, 
or which rows are mapped to this thread. And, and so it turns out if we do these minor changes, we can get some pretty substantial performance improvements. So let's go ahead and run this. So this is what, oh, let's get rid of the prints actually. Okay, so let's vim, uh, oh, that's the binary, that's CPP. Okay, we'll get rid of the prints because uh, we have a verify solution function down here that'll crash if uh, we get the wrong solution. So the prints are more for just visualization and we'll recompile and then we'll run. So again, we know that for small inputs, you know, multi-threading isn't that great because the overhead of, you know, the synchronization part of threads um, is really going to kill us. And serial stuff, because it doesn't have to worry about any synchronization, it just blazes on ahead. So, you know, we don't beat serial in small cases. So let's, let's start ratcheting up uh, the size of our matrix. So we'll go to, uh, here we go. So right now we're doing an 8 by 8 matrix with four threads, right? So let's, let's actually bring this down to two threads and let's move this up to a 64 by 64 matrix. All right, so we'll recompile and let's see. So we've already started beating the serial implementation, right? Uh, did we? Or they're very, very close uh, right now, right? So they're very, very close, okay? Uh, and in this case, yeah, they're very close. So we're still not quite beating it. So let's look to see what happens uh, when we make it even a little bit bigger. So let's do 512. 512 is a good number. So we'll do, oops, we gotta compile it first. Uh, there we go. All right. So here we started beating it, right? So this takes about uh, 0.12 seconds or 0.13 seconds. And at 5.12, we're, oh, we're doing it at 0 0.088 seconds. So pretty good performance. So let's actually, let's start ra ratcheting this up even further. So let's go to uh, 1024. And we can even increase the number of threads to say four threads. All right, so let's compile this. All right. So there we did it in about a le less than half a second. And uh, while the serial implementation took a whole second. So, you know, we're already two X's fast. Okay. So let's uh, let's push, push this to the extreme. Let's do 2048 now. So let's do there. Let's do 2048 and let's do eight threads. So 2048 and let's launch eight threads with this. Let's be ambitious. All right there we go and let's see how long it takes so about 2.9 seconds for the parallel implementation for uh, a 2048 by 2048 matrix and then about eight seconds for the um, for the other one so let's compare that to the uh, the serial or the not the serial version the other parallel version okay with the same number of threads so let's go back, let's go to the naive version. Let's compile this. There we go. Um, let's actually make sure that we've got the same thing. Ah, let's update this. 2048, and then let's make this eight threads. Okay, and then let's compile this, the naive one. So again, we're comparing against 2.9 seconds, and then zero one's about eight seconds. Serial one should, uh, oh, that's not running it, that's compiling it. There we go. So let's see how long it takes. So uh, as we can already see, so the parallel, parallel one's done. Serial one took just about the same amount of time, 8.1, 8.1, a little bit of difference at the end. But as we can see, um, we were able to make it you know, a fair bit faster. So about 300 milliseconds faster. And, you know, with multiple different trials and, you know, say if we did this 10 times and we averaged it, we'd get a better picture of what um, what this kind of ideal balancing point is um, or 
you know, how much better one is than the other. And another thing we'd like to do is also kind of sweep over, you know, for what matrix size and then for what combination of threads. So for two threads, four threads, eight threads, 16 threads, you know, at some point it's going to break down, right? At some point we're launching too many threads, synchronization costs get too high. But that's something that we kind of have to weigh as we go. And we'll show some plots on that as we build up some uh, later examples, uh, especially with other things like with OpenMP implementations and with uh, MPI based, which are message passing implementations. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, feel free to go to github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got all the code here. So we did practical parallelism in C++. Here's my email if you have any questions. Uh, down below is the link to my Twitch uh, channel that I stream on. So feel free to ask questions there as well. I do a lot of work on there. And then uh, again, links to the files, links to the videos. So we were in here, we were looking at a pthreads uh, cyclic striped implement uh, cyclic stripe mapping implementation and so we can find both of the files associated with that right in here so feel free to ask any questions in the comments I'd be more than happy to answer them a lot of this stuff is kind of tricky so there's a lot of nuance so it can get easy to get uh, tripped up but as always I'm Nick from coffee before arch and I hope you have a nice day